realizing the severe limitations that I have as an American, specifically a Midwestern American, most of my days are spent sitting, uh, either in a car or at a desk or on a couch or lying down on a bed. And most of us have, as Americans have lived our whole lives like that. And as I grow older, I obviously see my limitations um, and there's concern. There's a desire to change that because as a Christian, uh, one who believes in and studies prophecy, I see that we are facing a, a time of trouble. And, and if that occurs in my lifetime, then I don't want to be frail and fragile. I don't want to sit there and be like, well, it's too hot or it's too cold or, it's too, you know, or, oh my gosh, there's so many stairs or we got to walk all the way up that hill um, or have any ability to fight or sustain hard times. And I'm just being real. I'm just trying to be very real. So I'm making dramatic changes in my life. Uh, but I'm also not ready spiritually either. And, and I don't think any of us really are because Jesus described it as a time of tribulation that the world has never seen. So if you look at all the times of tribulation in the history of the world, the world has never seen anything as terrible as what, what this may become. And in addition to that, the world will never see anything again past that. And, and if this is going to occur in my lifetime, I believe it will. And if it is going to, and I could be wrong, uh, but if it is going to, I want to be ready. So in addition to the physical changes that I'm making in my life, the spiritual changes is I'm going to go through the book of Joshua verse by verse to really to understand the spiritual war that affects the physical war because it is the physical war that is driven by the spiritual war. If there was no evil, demonic things on this earth, then there would be no war. <laughs> there'd be no war. We would, if we were like Adam and Eve, we would have, there'd be no sin and death. So therefore there would be no war. Uh, once sin and death entered the, the earth, uh, then murder and war uh, began to occur. So real warfare is affected by spiritual warfare. Even if it's just a 10 second moment in time where you're defending your family in your home. Uh, so I, we're going through the book of Joshua. Now here we are, we're in the cold rain. There's, you know, I don't mind the rain. I don't mind the cold. I hate the cold rain. Um, and I wasn't going to come out here and film. And I realized, well, like, what are you even talking about? Of course you got to get out and film. Because it part of getting that is being out in the elements. I mean, a lot of people, if they spend two hours in the hot, uh, they just drop dead. Um, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be that guy. God guarantees us if we are part of the spiritual side of the remnant, of we are standing up for the things of God during the time of tribulation, that he will sustain us for three and a half years. But that doesn't mean we just sit in, a, in the Hilton and wait for three and a half years. No, it's going to be hard. Um, and understanding what we should be doing, because the book of Joshua is literally a blueprint on spiritual and literal warfare and finding victory in the literal warfare because you were obedient in the spiritual realm. So with that being said, we're just gonna get started. And as we continue this, it's gonna take a couple years to get through and, and it's gonna be going through the elements, getting out in the, in the elements, getting climbing mountains, getting to the gym, uh, studying jujitsu, um, training with your firearm, you know, all these things to prepare for a time of trouble is what I'm going to be doing. So I look forward by the time I get to the end of Joshua, what kind of condition I'll be in. I think it'll be fantastic. And if you're going to join me, join me. Don't just join me by reading it. Uh, you'll get a lot out of that, but change your life. Be prepared for a time. So let's start with Joshua 1 verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Now, I think a lot of people would just kind of glance over this, but it's very important we understand what just took place. Generations of Hebrews have fallen to get to this moment. And it's very important we understand what is that. This is a significant moment because it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. 
very significant because the generation before Joshua, well, the generation that Joshua was with, because it is only Joshua and Caleb, and we'll get into this in the next episode, they were the only two of Moses' generation that were allowed to go over to the promised land. They were kind of the elderly of the crowd uh, because of the cowardice of the Hebrews, because they were out in the wilderness. You know, they, they were being led, fed, taken care of, provided for, all these things by God, and they could not handle it. And, and it, to suggest that the remnant of God can sustain for three and a half years of being outlaws, watching our loved ones be held on trial and killed, watching our loved ones be taken away, going through hard times that the earth has never seen before, that somehow we're going to be braver than those Hebrews to say, well, wait a second, God, ha God said this was going to happen, so we're going to lean on that. This first generation, they were terrible. They were awful. They were spiritually the weakest thing I think I've ever even read about. I remember when I first became a Christian and I just picked up the Bible, Genesis kept going. And when I got to the Israelites leaving Egypt, I kept thinking, are they really that dumb? Like how could, like they just, you know, they, 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 they're set free and then they cross, uh, you know, they cross the Red Sea, it divides. They watch a sea divide and then fire comes down and consumes their enemies and then God feeds them and provides for them and protects them and takes care of them and leads them and says, hey, I'm leading you to this promised land, a land, you know, the land that not just I'm promising you, I promised Abraham. This is a thing that from the very beginning of your people, I said this was going to be a thing and you are going to be that generation that walks into that thing. And instead, they rejected it because of cowardice. Because they're, you know, well, why did God lead us to the world? Oh, we're so sick of eating manna. And we're so, oh, there's this terrible. Oh, this is terrible. And then they finally get over there and the spies went over to check it out. And they come back and majority of them said, you know what? Oh, it's scary over there. There's giants. They're going to kill us. And they all through cowardice thought, well, God's promises must be a lie. Why would he bring us here to kill us? It must be a lie. Let's kill our leaders and go back to Egypt. We were better off slaves than, than that, than what, what we're about to face. But what they're about to face is tremendous victory. Tremendous victory. It would have been the greatest thing their eyes had ever witnessed. But because of cowardice, they rejected that promise. They were too scared to cross a river. To cross a river. So as their punishment, God said, you, you know, you're not going in. You're going to wander the wilderness until every single one of you is dead. And then this other generation that did not do this business, they're going to be the ones going in. And now, in this moment in time, that statement, Moses is dead, now arise and cross this Jordan is huge. It's a huge moment in time. And as the remnant of God, as Christians, we have to be weary of that moment in time that I believe will happen in my generation. But if I'm wrong, it'll definitely happen in somebody's generation because the word of God says so. So this statement, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land, which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Joshua says, yes, yes. Yes, I will do this thing, God, because I've, I've seen the promise. I'm aware of the promise. I've seen the consequences of not believing in the promise. Yes, confidently, we are going to go whoop on these giants. And as the remnant, we have to begin to see this is going to be a very similar moment in time where decisions are going to be made in a moment, in a split second. If you happen to be in Jerusalem, according to Jesus, you won't even have enough time to decide to go in and get clothes if you're outside. You just got to go. And a lot of things will be like that. And there'll be cowardice as they'll say, well, wait a second, you don't want to do this thing because that will lead to certain death. This thing will lead to you are a criminal. This thing will lead to you're in trouble, buddy. But the brave, they will say, well, that doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if you're a criminal. It doesn't matter if the whole world, including the Antichrist and the strongest army the world has ever seen is warring against you. It doesn't matter. Because the word of God says that God's going to sustain us for three and a half years. And yeah, we'll lose at the end. And then Christ comes and gives you victory in a millisecond. Now, therefore, arise. 
Go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. It's understanding. It is truly understanding and believing in prophecy because that's the critical piece that a lot of people simply don't understand because they don't believe in prophecy or they don't understand it or both. By understanding prophecy, by believing in prophecy, you put those two things together, you have victory because Joshua is leaning on both those things. Both those things, the promises of the word of God and the prophecy that he heard that was given to his ancestor Abraham. He believed in both those things. And this generation is going to go in there as the greatest generation of Hebrews that ever walked the earth. They're the strongest. They're the most confident. They believe in God. Everything about them is like, well, God said do this, so let's go do this. God said don't do that, so let's not do that. It's the only generation, really, of all the Hebrews from Abraham to now that has ever done that. But the remnant of God, those 144,000 Jews, they'll be like that from all 12 tribes. And the multitude of tribes, nations, and tongues alongside them, they'll be like that. That generation will be like that. And it's important because I believe we're in that generation. And I don't think I'm the only one. I'm certain many of you. We see these things around us. Maybe I'm wrong. But the, Israel became a nation again in 1948. And Jesus said that generation will not pass away until all things are complete. Not some things. All things. Which includes the three and a half years of tribulation in addition to that. So the people that were alive in 1948 will witness those things. According to Jesus. It's important we prepare ourselves. If it takes two years to understand what it is God wants us to do during those three and a half years fully during this war, meanwhile, we're physically training. I mean, come on. You can't go wrong. That I know. This moment in time is significant that we just saw after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. We need to know the promises that are coming, and we need to believe in them. And the sooner we do that, the better. So continue to join me on this journey. Uh, it's going to take a couple years to get through, but don't just join me. You know, be ready. Like if you're following this, you're probably following it to be ready. You know, but don't just be spiritually ready. Be physically ready as well. You know, be, be all in. Um, it's only one book of the Bible. <laughs> By the time we get through it, you, you, it's going to be a different world. Any thoughts or insight? Definitely put that below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is also below. Uh, but the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns. <laughs>